Okay, so what always happens when we try to create these accounts together in class is that some of us can do it and some of us cannot. So here's your homework. Create a Google Plus account, which is actually at the address plus.google.com by next week at home. If we try to do it all together, uh, it may let half of us, it may not let the other half. And then create a personal Facebook account. Facebook.com, of course, by two weeks from now. Yes? It's easier to uh, teach it on the PC, on the computer, so that I can show a screen that looks the same as yours. Uh, I can't really show my, my little mobile device to you to tell you what to click on on the mobile. So the mobile app stuff, you can do it uh, on the side, but the one I will be asking is that you do the one on the computer. As I said, also in the next uh, in the next class, part two. So that's you know four weeks away. Eventually, we're going to want Pinterest. Three weeks from now. LinkedIn. Four weeks from now, etc. You get the idea. We're going to be working with these networks foreseeable future I would like I would have liked for everyone to come in already today with a Twitter account if everyone didn't have one that's okay we don't have a class I cannot communicate with you before the class started you weren't in the class but if you weren't able to create the account that's okay just follow along for the moment instead of trying to struggle and not pay attention and miss what I'm talking about so just follow along take notes rewatch this video that I'm recording and then you can do it at home is there's no account for YouTube there is. It is attached uh, to uh, the Google Plus account, actually. Oh. So if you create the Google Plus account, uh, you already have access to YouTube. And Google Plus, basically, it's Gmail. So if you've got a Gmail account, you have Google Plus, you have uh, YouTube, and you, you have all of that Google stuff. So if we have Gmail already, then we don't need to sign up for Google Plus. Uh, not really. You already you already have it exactly. But I would still visit that address to make sure it is set up. You you don't want to come in and it's not quite working. So I would still check it out even if you have a Gmail. So when you were setting it up, it might have asked you some various questions. And again, that's that that doesn't quite matter what what those things might have popped up. You need some sort of account. I've got an account here set up. Um, I'll mention some quick things and then we'll get directly into the main purpose of all the social networks to build an audience to get followers. So Twitter just changed their interface yesterday. <laughs> they had slightly different icons two days ago. Now they've got these icons. Okay, if you've never used Twitter, don't worry about it. This is Twitter. If you've used Twitter for a while, Twitter's slightly different now. It still works exactly the same. The interface and the buttons are slightly different on mobile, on desktop. So we've got the desktop version right here. Um, this is an account that I've got set up. It has uh, some stats right here. Yours may be 000. That's fine if you just created an account. I want to mention a few settings first, uh, then we'll get into it. This account, at the moment, has 98 followers. In theory, it has 98 people paying attention to this business. The purpose of the business you know, you have to figure out the pur your purpose online. Sometimes people just get on a network because someone told them it was a good idea. On any of this online stuff, you need, a, you need to ask, why are you using that system? So why do you have a website? A blog. A store online. A Twitter etc. Why do you have it? Not simply because someone told you, told you you need it, not because someone stands in front of the room and tells you you need Twitter. You need to figure out why you need Twitter uh, to find your right audience, to sell your product, etc. Let's say this business over here, this is a graphic design business. The purpose of vmcinc.net is to get hired to do graphic design. 
Okay, that's the purpose of the business. So I should be doing everything that I can in all of the networks to reach an audience that is interested in hiring VMC Inc. to do graphic design. So for example, VMC Inc. Graphic Design Company. Therefore, use Twitter to find potential clients. So they, I'm just going to start saying we. So we are hired to do graphic design. Graphic design is flyers, posters, anything graphically designed, uh, banners, business cards, stationery, etc. So VMC Inc. wants to get hired to do graphic design for businesses. That's the purpose of the company. Therefore, the purpose of the Twitter or any of the social networks is to get clients to hire us to do social media. I have to then figure out how to use the network most efficiently for that when I get to YouTube, for example, I have to figure out to create YouTube videos to get me hired to do graphic design. So build followers, clients that will see your tweets, impressions to get results, conversions, sales, or gigs, or hired. Um, you see the process here. I need followers. More followers mean more impressions, which could mean more conversions. Conversions, ultimately, I want sales. I want to get hired to uh, do graphic design. If I want to build followers, one of the big ways to not get followers is to not have your account filled in or completed. When you first create a Twitter account nowadays, you get a generic little person icon. Just a few months ago, you would get a little egg. You haven't hatched yet on Twitter. So one of those egg accounts means the account was just created, it's not even being used, it's not set up, it's not a very good account. Why would a customer follow uh, an account uh, with nothing to show for it? This one has been filled in, and I'll show you how to fill it in in a moment. It does have the logo of the company, some sort of graphic, the name of the company, etc. You might not have that, and you want to set it up as soon as possible. You can do that here. I've signed in. At the top right corner, I have a button. With an, with an icon, because I've already set it up for this one. You probably just have the generic person icon. Click on that, and then we have profile. On mobile, it's a little bit different, right? But um, there'll be a button there also on mobile to, to uh, edit your profile. Click on profile. Yes? Thank you. A GIF is just a kind of a graphic that you can that you can upload. There's different kinds of graphics. Is it like a short, they usually refer to it as like a short little like burst. Uh, well, it's just a kind of a graphic, but popularly a GIF graphic is a little animation, oftentimes, and that's what's popular nowadays. An animated GIF is a short burst of animation. But technically, it's just a graphics format, graphics file. Mm -hmm. Yes. Moments. Say that again, sorry? Mo what about moments? I can see the moment under the... Uh, the moment there is... Uh, here. Tweets, following, followers, yeah, this moment. Mm -hmm. I haven't... Uh, For the moment, it doesn't matter? Don't worry about it at the moment? <coughs> you can have it, I can. I have it at the moment because of other reasons, but uh, for the moment it's okay. 
So this account here, it has already been filled in. Oh, social media, web design, finance, keep up with the latest to be successful. It's been filled out uh, to explain itself what this is about. So when you first create your account, there's nothing really there. So do you see, once you visit your profile, you should see here, Edit Profile. You click your icon at the top right, you click Profile, and then you click Edit Profile. What you fill in here, I can't tell you. This depends on your business. Um, again, I have to teach a class for 32 people. What I say for 20 people will work for 20 people, and 10 people, it doesn't make sense. So editing the, the profile, the point is you need to create an account or a profile here that is, that is enticing for your followers. You need to tell your, the potential followers right away, what am I about? What is my business about? Why should you follow me? This is the example of this is your chance to make that first impression. In the real world, yeah, that first impression will land you that job or not. Here in the digital world, we're trying to get followers, which ultimately, hopefully, results in you know, getting hired or whatever. So there's a spot to add a logo, your company account logo. This can be anything you want, but it's going to be a circle. So if you have a company, if you have a logo that is a rectangle, tall or wide, this is going to be cropped. And I think they changed it, for, but for a long time, the chargers, um, they fixed it. But when I was teaching this previously and they had the old Bolt logo, it was getting cropped. It looked really unprofessional, and the, the logo was getting cropped out. But I guess they changed it when they changed. <laughs> so uh, the point is, if you have a square or if you have a rectangular logo, vertical or horizontal, it will be cropped, and it'll look weird. You want a logo that fits in that proportion. The exact pixel dimensions and all of that, you don't quite have to worry about it. You can look that up, but you need a, you need a logo that's round. There's also a top header graphic. You, there's another spot for you to use to put more marketing, more advertising, and branding. If you look at the accounts of other Twitter accounts, you get a sense of how they've done it. There's the Chargers logo. Don't worry, I'll change it in a moment. We don't want to look at them anymore. And then we've got over here a picture. I like that picture. It, it catches your attention of what it is. Okay, let's look, let's look at some that are not traders. So if we look at the Padres. Okay, here we go. So the logo here. Nice logo. Trademark fits there. Some players, although his head's getting cut off. So you've got a rectangular size graphic there. Let's look at our college, sdce.edu. I'm just getting examples of companies and businesses and organizations that are on Twitter to see how they've done it. There's the college's logo, some photos, a collage. Well, you have to have your graphic ready. You cannot create a collage here. You have to have used some software to create something like this collage. I'll mention software that I like in a moment. See some other ones here. Panera, red. Okay, so their logo in a circle, a wide graphic, just a bunch of food there. They wrote text. There's no way to write text in Twitter. You have to have your you have to have your graphics ready to use them on your site. One more. CNN. So again, they've got their logo, they're advertising something else, their digital magazine, state, just for fairness. Looking at other ones, again, picture of the studio, picture of the logo, it's kind of getting cropped a little bit, but we have all of these. And then again, uh, okay, my company on Twitter, PMD Interactive. That's our company. There's our logo, top graphic that further shows off. This has been designed in some software. What is some popular design or graphic software you might have heard of? Illustrator. Illustrator, good. Anything else? Photoshop. Photoshop. Those are the two big ones. They are not free, they are expensive. So what you could do instead is if you go to pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R.com, 
free graphics editing software online. You don't have to download and install anything. You can use it from any computer, web browser. You go there, you put text on a picture, you crop the picture, you stretch the picture, you do whatever you want to your pictures for free. Pixlr.com. All right, so um, Pixlr.com free graphics editing software. Does it what? Is there any catch like once you do it, then it's okay? To no, the only catch is there's going to be some ads that might annoy us, but besides that, it's completely free to use. So, task complete your profile as soon as possible. Add your logo. Shape, header image, full name, and I'll explain that in a moment. Bio. Pixlr.com for graphics editing. Full name. Well, that obviously means I'm going to put Victor Campos, right? No, I'm going to put the full name of the business. It doesn't make it that obvious. It wants a full name, so okay, I'm going to put my name, Victor Campos, for the business. No, because then Victor Campos will be visible on Twitter. That might not be good or bad. It, it depends. For this business, VMC Inc., it doesn't. It's not a good idea. I want VMC Inc. to be the full name that people see on Twitter, not the name of me involved in the business. Yes? So when you sign up to the Twitter account and ask for your name, the name of the business. If you didn't, that is editable right here. So some, some people might have done that, that when you created the account, it asks full name and I put my full name. No, you want the full name of the business. It doesn't tell you, obviously. But that's where you change it. If I had put Victor Campos, but this is going to be VMC Inc., that's not quite right. A reason why it may be right is, let's say I'm a realtor. OK, Victor Campos Realtor. Let's say I have a business called you know, uh, Sunset Realty. That's the name of the business. But I do want to sh promote myself, the person, the realtor, in addition to the name of the business. So it might be OK that the full name there is Victor Campos, even though the name of the business on Twitter is Sunset Realty. So there's no right or wrong answer here. But most likely, you're going to want the name of the business as the full name on Twitter. There's a spot for a biography. There's a little box there about what the business is, if it's not obvious. If you had heard of the business vmcinc.net, you don't know at all what the business does. Sunsetrealty.com, of course, it's probably about realty. Panera Bread, well, they seem to be some sort of bakery. You know, all of these businesses that have this sort of name of what they are in the title, it's obvious what they are. VMC Inc., it's not. So you should use that biography to write sentences and keywords about what your business is. Because in a moment, when we talk about finding connections and building followers, we're going to really focus on hashtags and keywords. When people search for the word social media, this account has that in the profile, meaning it could get found by those that are searching for social media on, so you on have Twitter. What's would you that? that? Would you use that bio for keywords? You would put keywords in there? Mm -hmm. So the bio... Complete sentences, not just keywords. Complete sentences with keywords about your business. This helps you get found. One of the many factors that we'll look at. This helps you get found. On Twitter. Someone is on Twitter, they need to hire a plumber, they can go to the little search box right there and, t and search plumber. 
and those accounts that have the keyword plumber in the full name or in the biography could get found. Well, that's a great secret that I just told you, a great secret that everyone knows. So what I'm saying is simply relying on putting the keyword of plumber in my biography is not going to be as effective as you think because other plumbers are going to put plumber in that biography. We'll talk about more tactics we need to talk about to further get us found. But I would recommend in the biography you put these sentences or keywords about what your business is. So social media, web design, finance, keep up with the latest to be successful. So keywords of web design, of finance, of success. Location and website. At the moment, if I want to sell my services as a graphic designer, web designer in this business, um, there's, there's really no like buy button on Twitter exactly. It goes to your website. So you want to include, if you have a website, the link to your website. Always drive traffic. You need to put that right in the bio. I, what's that? You can put that right in the bio, a link to your website? Or is it you different? could, but the problem with putting it in the bio is that it's not linked. It's not an active link. Always drive traffic back to your website. Your website is where you can accomplish most of your goals. I'm trying. I put. I. I want my phone number on my website. A way to call me. A Skype. I, I have a, a mailing address on my website. I have the store catalog. I have what I'm trying to accomplish on my website. Uh, Twitter is the marketing tool. Like you're not exactly making the sale on that flyer. You're not making the sale on the radio ad. You're making that sale when they call you, when they visit you. So all of the social media also is, as often as possible, trying to drive traffic back to our site, where the phone number is, where the contact form is, etc. You may see something about a Vine profile. If you see that, great. If not, don't worry about it. Vine was another social network owned by the Twitter company, which was short little videos, six-second long videos. So they were very fun and popular for whatever reason Twitter shut it down you cannot create a Twitter a vine account anymore this is sort of grandfathered in if you don't have that don't worry about it then we've also got a show live yes you have to click the edit profile on the right side we have show when I'm live this is if you also have the extra Periscope app to turn on live video to show your followers something live, you can set that up. So when you record something on Periscope, it will automatically feed through your Twitter? Uh, kind of, no. Uh, there is an option. If you leave it on, it will automatically feed to Twitter. You can turn it off. Sometimes you don't want to show a Periscope on Twitter for some reason, so you can turn it on or off. Or you can send your Periscope broadcast directly to Twitter whenever you want. There's something about birthday. You don't have to worry about that. That's more for the person. And then there's a little bit here of theme color if you want to change colors further of your profile. So again, what to fill in on your profile, that's going to be up to you. Look at the examples of other businesses. You can search other accounts up on search. You can type their address, get inspiration from the competition for you to then further create your profile. Yes? If you go to Pixlr, you create your graphic, and then there'll be download, a button to download. You download it to your computer, and then on Twitter, you'll be able to upload it. So that's the first task. If you don't have it, you want to complete your profile. And the purpose for that is, why would someone follow an incomplete account?
I have very little incentive to follow an account that doesn't look complete. I don't know what they're about, they don't have a biography. I can't see their graphics, uh, etc. Task. Beginner. Have three to five tweets published before trying to get followers. I filled in my profile really nice, great graphic, biography, etc. Still, people are not going to follow me because I'm not tweeting. I'm not using Twitter. Why would I follow an account that does nothing for me? I want to follow an account personally. I want to follow accounts about finance. Let's say I'm interested in finance. So I'm going to find Twitter accounts that are all about finance, learning about the stock market, learning about 401ks, learning about finance. I want to follow accounts, not just because they've got a cool logo, because they've got tweets that I care about. So if your account right now has no tweets, you most likely will not get followers. As a beginner, I would recommend at least three to five tweets. You want to have some tweets out there to show people what your business is about to hopefully get followed. This is the hard part about teaching everyone, here's how to tweet. Because I can show you how to tweet for this business, which is about graphic design, social media, finance, etc., which is not what your business is about. So, briefly, we'll look at this. At the top right corner, you should see a button that says Tweet. Compose a tweet. There's a little box for you to write a tweet. You have 140 characters as you start writing. Your letters and numbers and symbols and spaces all diminish the tweet until you get to zero. You don't have to write 140 characters every time, but you have that limit. If you go past the limit, you cannot send your tweet. I went 70 characters over. I can't tweet. So you think, this is so limiting. I can't put out my message of my business in 140 characters. Not 140 words, 140 characters. Spaces included, symbols included. Well, we're not quite limited because we can attach pictures. We can do little photo albums. We can do little animations, animated GIFs. We can add polls. We can ask questions. We can attach a location. We can also attach links. Yes? Um, when I post tweets, sometimes when I uh, go in a hyperlink, um, it shows like a, a little preview picture, mm -hmm. little text. How does Twitter know whether to decipher whether that's embedded in the tweet or not? So I don't understand where. Most of the time, let me, let me show an example right here. I'm going to, let's say I wanted to share a, a link. Here's some, something, how to record a podcast. Let's say I wanted to share that on, on Twitter. So if I copy the link into the tweet. Um, depending on the link that I'm trying to share, it may then create that little preview and such. That's going to depend on what is on the page. If there is a picture that it can grab, if there is some sort of preview text that it can grab, it'll take that to create the preview. If there isn't a picture, there's nothing for it to grab and it won't really show very nice. Is that be something like a web designer? Just, just one at a time. Does, does that answer? Does um, that make sense? So when I'm on WordPress, is there a code that I put so that it acknowledges that, so that it does show a preview? That's a little bit getting out of our, our purpose here, WordPress question. Uh, yeah, on WordPress there should be on the right side something that says set featured image. And then that should be able to then grab the picture to then use it on Twitter. Thank you. Question. I was just kind of, uh, I was wondering if a web developer or what, you know, if you do web design, would that be able to help him kind of identify what pictures would go up? It, or, you know, because I noticed like, Big websites, kind of off of what he's saying, they'll have like automatically like a picture will show up, or a, a, like their logo or, or their they're saying. Would that be something? I mean, that that a web developer or designer could do. Yeah, example? that's something that needs to be planned because nowadays having the site is not enough. We need to be on social media. So creating articles and posts and pages on our site, we need to think about it also. How will it look on social media? 
So like on WordPress, setting the featured image, it's not on by default, a lot of people forget to do it. If you set the featured image on WordPress, Twitter should then find that picture to then use it. Facebook should find it to use it when we send it off to social media. Yes? Yes, it's going to show people's broadcasts. So how are we going to manage? If you want to make your own broadcasts, you're going to need the Periscope app. There's the Twitter app, the main Twitter app, and then there's the Periscope app. So that's how you can make broadcasts. Broadcasts or podcasts? Broadcasts. So we should, we should uh, do something for the new broadcast? Anybody can see my broadcast? That is a topic that I would be getting into later in the course. We are going to have a different day when we talk about live video. So right now, I don't want to answer too much about it because it's going off on a different topic of, of live broadcast. But it is... Yeah. Well, again, that's getting into the topic of talking all about broadcast, so we can get into that a little later. So on this tweet, um, I'm going to post a, a link, let's say. We can post different sorts of, of tweets, text, uh, photos, up to four, um, GIFs, fun animations, polls, asking questions, uh, location, attach a map to your tweet. So let's say I'm at, I'm a, let's say, a bakery, Victor's Bakery, and we are at an event at a hotel, and we want to show, uh, hey everyone, we're at the, the Hotel Del Coronado, come visit us for a free cupcake. Well, I could tweet that, I can attach the location, there's a little button that says location, and it can attach a location, a map, so that then someone that's on mobile device, they see, oh, they're giving away free cupcakes. Click the map, and I go to the location. And then also a link. Copy and paste a URL or an address, a web address. So I have 140 characters, but I'm not, I'm not really limited. Uh, we have the ability to um, post different kinds of content, pictures, multimedia, even sound. Uh, and all of that. So again, what to tweet, I, I don't quite, uh, I can't quite teach that for the whole class because what I tell, what I tell you, that's going to be great for half the people and not half the other people. So instead, what I'm going to show you is this website, inspiration, what to tweet. Go to the site, socialmediaexaminer.com. SocialMediaExaminer.com is one of the many industry blogs about social media. There's plenty of articles there with inspiration and advice about how to use Twitter if you're a lawyer, how to use Facebook if you're a realtor, how to use Pinterest if you've never used Pinterest. So instead of me teaching exactly how to tweet, because again, my company gets hired to do this per client, and what we do for one client is not going to work exactly for another client. Yes, we need to do X number of tweets, and yes, we need to do the other things we'll talk about, but the tweet from one business might not exactly translate to another business. We'll talk about building followers, of course, but what to tweet is a little harder. If you, if you, look at, if you take a quick look at socialmediaexaminer.com, Social customer care apps and processes, how to build a successful social media marketing plan, how to repurpose content for blog and beyond, how to engage millennials in Facebook and Instagram. So again, this is going to be way better than me trying to show, to talk about something 
that doesn't apply for everyone. You find an article here that makes most sense for you. You have also search at the top. You can search specific networks and keywords and find Twitter for realtors. And there'll be plenty of articles and advice and inspiration that'll help you most. At least what I will say again is tweet content that creates a reaction. Social media often can get the stigma of, yeah, well, that's where, you know, kids are sharing cat pictures. That's where hipsters are sharing photos of their food. That's where people are bullying each other or faking elections and all of that. Well, this is a medium of communication. So I'm trying to communicate with an audience. Therefore, I'm going to use Twitter or any of the social networks for business purposes. All of the social networks have those two purposes, the personal frivolous aspect and the professional business aspect. And they're both valid. So personal, business, fun, frivolous, family, business, professional, customers, clients. Not that you can't have a fun and frivolous Twitter account to reach a, your audience. For example, companies like Taco Bell, obviously, you know, they're trying to reach a target audience. And from what I see, they are, they are really trying to tap into, you know, the millennial audience, a young audience, a college audience, an audience that wants a Taco Bell taco at 2 in the morning after the bar. So they're going to uh, post fun, frivolous, weird things for that audience. That fun frivolity doesn't work for a CPA. I'm not going to trust them. Why are they being trying to be so funny with their taxes? Just do my taxes. You know, make sure I'm not getting audited. Don't make jokes. So both of these are the side of the same coin. They're both social media. They're both valid. I, will, I use personally social media, all of these networks, to connect with friends and family and find interesting people and chat about things that I like. And I also do it for clients that hire my business. We find the right audience, we tweet to the right audience, we post on Facebook to the right audience, we make YouTube videos for the right audience. So always trying to create content that'll get that reaction. In uh, Victor's Bakery, I'm tweeting out photos of cupcakes to entice people to get hungry and click the button to buy the cupcake. In VMC Inc. Net, I'm trying to um, post out tweets with a how to build your own logo in five minutes. That link goes back to the company of graphic design. They try to do it. They don't do it well. Oh, there's a button that says hire us. So I'm trying to get a reaction. I'm trying to get results, and I'm trying to get conversions. Right now, these tweets really, however, are going to all of Twitter, no targeting, meaning they're going to no one. But I'm saying still, you need some amount of tweets, some proof of what your business is before trying to get a lot of followers. So yeah, at the beginning you're going to be tweeting to no one. Imagine that this account says zero followers, uh, like many of us may have. That's fine. You're going to tweet to no one at the beginning. What you're going to do is sort of build a resume to show this is what we're about. Look at these tweets. This is what we do. Like this one for fun here. A tweet about, what's your favorite type of cookie? Chocolate chip one. So it's not always serious. That's a vote. Those were votes, yeah. Uh -huh. I'll do a little vote thing in a moment. But uh, you can do have people voting. You can have something with a reaction. Are you ready to start investing in 2017? Let's look back on your portfolio. So there's a link. That's a video. Different content. So as the beginner, you at least, at least need some tweets. Intermediate, tweet on a regular basis. There's different levels here. Beginner in intermediate once per week. Intermediate, intermediate.
go to 5 times per week advanced every day. All of these relate to the intermediate level, meaning the basic level is you have five tweets. Well, that's not good enough. Just having some tweets is not going to carry you forever. You have to be active. Social media, being active. So an intermediate level is starting to tweet on a regular basis. Once a week is just fine. I think of a tweet on Monday, I put it out there. Next week I'll tweet something else on Tuesday, a week after that something on Monday, or whatever strikes my fancy. The more I do it, the more results you get. I'll, I'll show an example a little later that uh, the more you're active, the more impressions you get, and more impressions could lead to more conversions, right? Quick question. Mm -hmm. Can you tweet too many times? I think so, but uh, too many times is like 100, 100 per, a hundred per day. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So no more than a hundred a day. Exactly. Okay. That's my recommendation. So there is a balancing act here about how often, because if I'm tweeting often but it is valuable information, people like that. Oh, something new. I logged in, they've got something new. Great. Tweeting too often but it's more, it's mostly about buy this, sign up for that, order now. If I'm very much in the marketing mindset of selling and selling and selling. That's going to turn people off. If I'm tweeting twice a day, if I'm tweeting three times a week, and all of my tweets all week long are just about coupon here, sale that, call us now, etc. So balance the sales tweet with the community building tweet. Don't always tweet about a sale, a coupon, you know, something about sale, order now, call us. Don't do that. Let's say you're going to do one tweet a week. Even that, you know, every single week is just a tweet to sell you something. Well, I'm starting to feel I don't want to really follow that. They're just selling me something every time. I can't tell you demographics about how many people will be turned off with how many tweets. I cannot tell you that for your business, but we can see that in your personal statistics screen when we get to that in a moment. Yes? In the case of a bakery, mm -hmm. what would be the community building tweet? I want to reach an audience that would be interested in my baked goods. Therefore, I want to reach hungry people. So I want to build a community of followers that are interested in cookies, cupcakes, maybe I'm selling, you know, healthier versions with no sugar, let's say. So I'm trying to build a community of followers that are into, you know, healthier versions of, of food. Let's say I'm, I want to build an audience followers of, of those that are interested in gluten-free cupcakes. So I'm trying to just build followers based on a community so that eventually, hopefully, they click a link that says buy this gluten-free cupcake today. That's a sale. How about community building? The community building, again, is that the exact kind of tweet to teach. I can't do that. That's why I mentioned the social media examiner. I'll give some general ideas, but then again, <coughs> how to build a community. I can give an example of how to build a community for bakeries, but that's not going to apply for realtors, and there's some realtors here. That's not going to apply for lawyers, and there's lawyers here. So if I just focus on here's how to get more followers if you're a bakery. None of us are in a bakery here. So I can talk generically, and I'll mention generically, but exact kinds of tweets, that's a little harder to, to teach. Yes? They can be the same post, it can be the same text, sure because ultimately what I would say is to try to be on as many networks as possible to reach an audience. People that are on Facebook want to be on Facebook, they're not on Twitter. So I want to be, I want to reach people on Twitter, I want to reach those that are on Pinterest, I want to reach those that are on Facebook. So that means a lot of work. I have to post the same thing three times on three networks, let's say. Yeah, it is more work, we'll go into detail, but 
It's basically finding the right audience on each network. What's the name of that um, site that converts all the social media <coughs> to one platform? Well, we'll talk about it a little bit later as we as we kind of look more of these platforms. So, um, mix it up between. to building tweets. So for example, polls. I'm not trying to sell <laughs> anything there, really. I had that example. What's your favorite kind of cookie? That obviously works great for a bakery. If I'm a realtor, um, I, you know, let's say I'm a realtor specializing in first-time home buyers. Uh, I could put out a poll with a few questions. Um, I could, I could say something like, what's the number one pitfall in buying a house, in your opinion? And I have three choices, you know, not securing a loan in time, not having proper income notification, something, right? A poll. I'm asking questions. I'm just trying to engage people answering a question interested in following. And text tweets with questions putting out there a question to the community. And yeah, at the beginning I have one follower, so I may get one quest one reply. But I'm trying, and we will see other ways, I'm trying to build followers, so then I'm asking questions to keep the community growing. Fun photo. Link. I'm not trying to sell. Let's say I... Um, I'm a construction company. I'm not trying to sell my construction services on every single tweet, but on one tweet, I'm going to post a fun photo of the whole crew standing on a on a backhoe or whatever. Everyone standing on the equipment, smiling and waving. That's just a fun photo. Here's the team. Here's who you are hiring to do your construction. So again, with everyone's example, I can't do that, but ideas of posts that are not just about buy this now. Hire us now. Here's a photo of everyone on the team. Definitely check out Social Media Examiner for more tips and advice. Uh, one more thing that will take a break. Advanced. Tweet on a tweet on the reg. Whatever you define that. Check your stats, aka analytics, which can be found at analytics.twitter.com to then create content to reach that audience. People always ask, what's the best time of day to tweet? What's the best day of the week to tweet? I can't answer that you will be able to look up articles and everyone's going to give you an opinion. They're all, all those articles are right and all of those articles are wrong because it depends on your business. My target audience is not up at Mondays at 8 in the morning to see my tweet. Someone else's audience is. My audience is most up and available on Friday nights at midnight, which is actually some Saturday morning, right? So. I cannot tell you what's the best time to tweet. Whatever answer I give you works for some audience, maybe not yours. Guess what? Twitter itself will tell you what the best time is, the best day is, the best keywords. But it tells you that the more you use Twitter, the more you do a variety of kinds of tweets, the more you do it on different days, the more you put in a little bit of effort to cast a net, and then Twitter will tell you what fish you've caught. Therefore, you can do your tactics to further try to catch those fish, that audience. You can find your statistics there. Right now, if you go to that, if you go to that address right now with a brand new account, there's not much to show you. It doesn't know how effective you've been to give you advice on how more effective to be. And that's not like paying, that's just something that they provide that's you? That's free, yeah. How do you access that? You go to this address. Seems like the more interactive you make, the more success you get. Yes. The more you're active on these networks, the more success you get. 
So that billboard that's on one highway, guess what? It's more, it's more successful if that billboard is on three other streets. That flyer that I covered this parking lot with, it's going to be more effective if I also put it in the parking lot across the street. So the more active you are in real-world marketing and digital marketing, the more it could work. Obviously more effort and more expense, but tweets are free. You can tweet 100 tweets. What I meant is that if you make it interactive between you and your targeted audience oh. with special rewards that yeah. keeps them yeah. paying attention to it. Yeah, that happens in the real world too. Like That's why these like um, companies have those reward cards. If I make, if I buy ten things, the eleventh one is free. So I'm gonna go in and buy ten things to get the eleventh one free. You, they're interacting that way. Here again, questions, polls, pictures, being active, replies, and all of other things we'll talk about. Yeah, that gets you more active, more community building, and that then when you have the tweets about sale this Saturday, you know you have more followers to hopefully become conversions. Search. And I'll explain that in detail right after the break. Let's take a break. It's 11.35. We'll be back at 11.45. We'll talk about this. Very simple word, very powerful feature of Twitter.